Hello people, in the last video, so we have started off with the anti-amoebic drugs, so against uh, entamoeba, histolytica, etc. What and all have we seen so far? We saw what exactly it causes, it causes amoebic dysentery. These are the anti-amoebic drugs. In this you should know metronidazole, tinidazole, chloroquine and dilozanide furoate. These four you should know. Netronidazole, tinidazole are nitroimidazoles. Dilozanide furoate is an amide. It's a luminal amoebicide. Okay? It kills the amoeba if they are in the lumen. Because they, are, they don't get absorbed basically. <clears throat> they remain in the lumen. So they can kill the amoeba in the lumen. These are tissue amoebicides. They will kill the amoeba which are present in the tissue. Metronidazole is a prototype drug that you should know. It is a nitrohemidazole. It can kill anaerobic bacteria. It can uh, it acts against trichomonas vaginalis, entamoeba histolytica and giardia lamblia. Mechanism of action, it has a nitro group. It has a nitro group and when the metronidazole enters the microorganism because protozoa are actually unicellular. So basically they are single cell and once they enter the cell, this nitro group, if, if it is an anaerobic environment, if there are electrons, this nitro group will, this nitro group will accept electrons and this one <clears throat> will become a very uh, dangerous molecule. So, it becomes a highly reactive nitro radical which damages the DNA of the microbe. Okay. And <clears throat> it will cause the death of the organism. Fine. So, it needs anaerobic environment. Metronidazole pharmacokinetics we have already seen given orally, topically or IV. It achieves uh, therapeutic concentrations in vagina, CSF etc. The metabolism occurs in liver. And the metabolites are excreted in urine. Plasma half-life is uh, 8 hours. So, it is uh, given 3 times a day. Now, let us look at uh, adverse effects. Thrombophlebitis, allergic reactions, leukopenia, seizures. So, it causes uh, CNS side effects. It's a teratogen, metronidazole. So, it should uh, be avoided in humans. It's teratogenic in animals, found to be teratogenic in animals. Hence, they don't recommend in humans. It has a disulfiram-like reaction with alcohol. Contraindications. So, in people who have CNS problems, you should not give. If they have blood pathologies, you should not give. Pregnant women uh, should not receive metronidazole. Then, alcoholics don't give. It causes disulfiram-like reaction. You should tell the person not to take alcohol with metronidazole. Interactions, it increases warfarin concentration, it increases lithium toxicity. Metronidazole uses our ami okay, I think this is where we are supposed to start this video, right? So, very quickly, we will look at the uses of metronidazole. We have already seen these things. Trichomonas vaginalis, earlier it was used, correct? First, they started using it for this. Then they found that it is effective against amoebia assis, that is amoebic dysentery. Then they also found it to be useful against Giardia lamblia. If there is any supra infection caused by Clostridium difficile, this is pseudomembranous enterocolitis caused by Clostridium difficile as a supra infection, even there it is useful. This much you already know. Some extra points here acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Gingi gingivitis okay so for gingivitis also you can use metronidazole helicobacter pylori infection also we can use metronidazole okay is this clear guys shall we move on just uh, try to remember what and all has been taught in the uses Uses of uh, metronidazole 
are uh, going to be against amoebiasis, amoebic dysentery, giardia lamblia. Then uh, you have against uh, trichomonas vaginalis. And then uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Clostridium difficile supra infection, that is uh, pseudomonas, uh, pseudocolitis, pseudo, what is that? Pseudomembranous enterocolitis. Then, mm, gingivitis, that is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Then, helicobacter pylori, gastritis, peptic ulcer caused by uh, helicobacter pylori bacteria, that is. So, in that case also, you can use metronidazole. Okay. Fine. So, remember, metronidazole comes under anti amoebia drugs. So, you will be able to write amoebiasis, right? Coming to tinidazole, what is good about tinidazole? This tinidazole, no, actually, it is more, uh, longer acting than metronidazole and it is more... Uh, tolerate well tolerated by people hence tinidazole is actually preferred to metronidazole okay it is actually given 2 gram per day that's a huge amount right 2000 mg per day it's a better cure to amoebiasis actually we will come to the regimen of uh, amoebiasis treatment that time you will see these three drugs metronidazole tinidazole and <clears throat> dilozanide furoate this is going to be effective against luminal and amoebicides because it is not absorbed it will stay in the lumen because it is not absorbed so what will happen it will stay in the lumen and it will kill the amoeba or the trophozytes which are responsible for production of cysts okay so it will kill the trophozoites if you have seen the initial slide this one so if you know the life cycle of entamoeba histolytica, you will be able to understand that. The cyst is the infective form, the mature cyst. That gets excistation in the small intestine where it becomes a trophozoid. This trophozoid actually goes to damage the cecum, the long, long, largest intestine, the colon. These ulcers are caused by these trophozoids. So, the whole point of um, dilozanide furoate is to kill the trophozoids. Okay, luminal amoebicide. Okay, let's go back where we were. Dilozanide furoate, this is where we are now. Let's um, move on guys. Amoebiasis treatment, in this don't worry that much. This is a regimen given from KDT textbook. We will look at it in the next video. Come back. See you, bye bye.